Um, so welcome everybody. We're really excited to have you here today um, for this screening of this uh, virtual keynote, Uprooting Racism, Seeding Sovereignty. Um, yeah, really, really excited to have you all today. So since there is a, quite a few of us here, we're not going to do any out loud intros or anything, but if you would like to, you're welcome to um, introduce yourself in the chat. Um, you can add in your name, your pronouns if you'd like to, where you are in Wisconsin or not in Wisconsin. Um, what brings you to this event and your favorite outdoor activity? Pick and choose whatever you'd like to of all of those. We'd love to know who's here with us. Um, if you run into any tech problems, just let us know in the chat and somebody will reach out to you directly to help sort that out. Um, we're going to ask that you all remain on mute throughout the event just to make it easy to hear everything, um, especially since we'll be screening this video in a couple minutes. Um, and then the last thing, which um, is pretty exciting, is that we're doing a book giveaway of Leah Penniman's book, Farming Well Black, Soul Fire Farmer's Practical Guide to Liberation on the Land. Um, and so it'll be a random sampling of those who are in attendance tonight. So it could be you, the lucky winner. Um, so just stick around um, and those will get sent out um, after the event. But we're really excited to have you all today. And again, welcome to those of you who are just joining in now. So this is a little bit of a roadmap um, for what we're gonna be talking through and going through tonight. Um, we're doing some intros and a welcome right now. Um, and then we'll do the recorded keynote, um, which is the address by Leah Penniman, which I'm really excited to share with everybody. Um, and then we'll be hearing a little bit about organizations in Wisconsin who are doing related work here, which will be great. You can see kind of how there are connections made between the keynote, um, things happening near you. Um, and then we'll wrap up. We won't keep you too long, but hope you um, definitely enjoy the night. And I am just gonna start us off by doing a land acknowledgement. Um, so today we honor and celebrate the indigenous people of what we call Wisconsin um, and recognize the lands on which we live. The vast history of the Dakota, Ojibwe, Ho-Chunk, Menominee and Potawatomi nations underlie what the state is today. Starting in the early 1800s, the US government engaged in treaty making and treaty breaking, deceit, violence and various forms of genocide. This was done to take land for the benefit of white settlers and their descendants. We must fully acknowledge this truth and the harms done and engage in reparative actions with Native peoples, which includes advocating for Native nations treaty rights, respecting Native sovereignty and culture, contributing resources to Native-led efforts to heal from generations of trauma, and supporting their ongoing relationship with their ancestral lands. Wisconsin has a strong Native presence with 12 Indian nations and tribal communities, including the Bad River Band, Potawatomi, Ho-Chunk, Makutere, Lac de Flambeau, Menominee, Oneida, Red Cliff, Mole Lake, St. Croix, Stockbridge, Muncie, and Brotherton Nation. And we are here to acknowledge their presence and history and encourage everybody here to partake in their celebration and reparative actions. And thank you all for these intros. I see them coming in in the chat down below. I want to thank um, the many, many groups who helped promote this event today. Um, there were a ton of you and I really appreciate it. Um, I feel like this is a really, really exciting keynote and I'm glad to be able to um, have so many of you here watching tonight. And I wanted to say thank you, especially to the groups who were um, willing to share what they are doing in Wisconsin today. So Teens Grow Greens and Urban Triage. Um, person who was going to speak on behalf of Urban Triage tonight unfortunately had something come up last minute and couldn't make it but we'll still share what they are working on because they do some really awesome work but we will be hearing about Teens Grow Greens from Dr. Sylvia Wilson so that'll be really exciting they're doing awesome work in the Milwaukee area um, and we'll get to that shortly after the screening. So I'm just going to do a quick intro to um, this keynote and then we'll get started. Um, so Soul Fire Farm, based in New York State, is an Afro-Indigenous centered community farm committed to uprooting racism and seeding sovereignty in the food system. They raise and distribute life-giving food as a means to end food apartheid and work to reclaim the collective right to belong to the earth and to have agency in the food system. Soul Fire Farm brings diverse communities together to share skills on sustainable agriculture, 
natural building, spiritual activism, health and environmental justice, and they are training the next generation of activist farmers and strengthening the movements for food sovereignty and community self-determination. Their food sovereignty programs reach over 10,000 people each year, um, including farmer training for black and brown growers, reparations and land return initiatives for Northeast farmers, food justice workshops for urban youth, home gardens for city dwellers living under food apartheid, doorstep harvest delivery for food and secure households and systems and policy education for public decision makers. So they do a ton of really, really awesome stuff. Um, and if you haven't checked them out before tonight, you definitely should afterward. We'll, we'll let you know links and, and anything you might need. Um, and then this virtual keynote is presented by Soul Fire Farm co-founder and farm manager, Leah Penniman, and it weaves the history and structural realities of racial injustice in the food system with movement strategies past and present of frontline communities mobilizing for food and land sovereignty. Um, and so with that, I'm really excited to share this screening with all of you and we are gonna get started. So just please remember to stay on mute through the screening. Um, feel free to utilize the chat if you want to. Um, I know there's a lot of interesting things that'll be going on. You might wanna comment and share your thoughts and everything. So that's welcome. And we'll get started momentarily. Okay, hope you all enjoyed that. I feel like it was very powerful, informative, maybe emotional, um, but I hope that it um, is inspiring to you all and impactful and that you are thinking about um, what that impact is for you in the coming days. Um, but for now, we're going to hear briefly about some of the really important and exciting work that is happening in Wisconsin in the agricultural sphere. Um, so I'm going to in introduce um, two organizations that are doing this work. And I'm going to start with Urban Triage. I had mentioned earlier they were planning to be here tonight, but something came up. So I'm just going to share more about what they do. Um, and I asked if they had anything they wanted to share with you in terms of actions you can take. And so if they do, then I will send that out um, in a follow-up email. Um, I'm not keeping close track of the, of the comments or chat, but I am seeing a lot of people who really enjoyed that. So I'm really glad I did too. Um, so Urban Triage, based in Madison, has a mission to foster, develop, and strengthen Black economic power, Black family self-sufficiency, community leadership, advocacy, and family success through transformative education, psychoeducation, community engagement, trauma response, healing, and cultural heritage. Their vision is to empower and inspire breakthroughs and transformation by way of education and leadership in Black children, Black women, Black men, and Black communities. And they do this through a huge variety of programs that support well-being, which includes a supporting healthy Black agriculture program. So um, we'll share links to their website for sure and anything else that they um, suggest you do to help support them. And then I'm really excited to introduce this other organization, Teens Grow Greens, um, based in Milwaukee. Um, they develop um, teens through transformative experiences that cultivate uh, belonging, life and career skill building, and connections to opportunities that grow leadership. Um, and their vision is to believe in a future of healed and healthy humans leading change in their communities. And they offer programs that center respect, responsibility, and resilience as key values. Um, and so I'm really, really excited to bring up Dr. Sylvia Wilson from Teens Grow Greens um, to share a little bit more about their work. Um, and I'll just invite you to get us started. And I know that you um, have some slides you wanna share, so feel free to do that. Um, but we are all really excited to hear from you. Thank you. Um, just an amazing, thank you for inviting me. Thank you, Sarah Club, um, for being willing to partner with us on this and um, get the word out about the keynote. It was absolutely awesome and quite honestly, hard to follow up on. <laughs> it's, um, it's like, how much more can be said that's already than what's already been said? So, but I thank you for the opportunity to be able to share. Um, like was shared, I am Sylvia Wilson. I'm the program director at Team Grow Greens. Um, we are based in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, um, and basically provide um, a number of learning and job training opportunities for teens that are rooted in urban agriculture. Um, I will actually go ahead and share my screen. There we go. 
hope you all can see this and go to presentation mode. Um, so again, we provide two different levels of job training for, for teens. Um, and so we've recently actually just kind of carved out this um, career pathway journey for our teens. So Teens for Greens was started in 2014 by Charlie Eline um, and his wife, Rachel, and basically has always provided internship opportunity for teens, um, particularly in the north side of Milwaukee, um, which serves uh, primarily African-American um, teens and basically allow, uh, provided opportunities to, again, learn what we call learn, grow, and go. So learn um, about urban agriculture, learn about healthy living, learn about um, how to grow food, be able to be mentors to young people in the summer, um, and actually uh, learn about entrepreneurship. Um, we are currently in the midst of a shift. So in 2022, um, what we've decided to do is take what has typically been our nine month paid internship and transition um, under the direction of edu um, our education director, Dominic Inouye, um, and the education team into three three month internships. Um, and so the first one is really gonna be focused on um, it's leading my life is what it's called. So a healthy brains, healthy bodies, healthy bank accounts. Students will be learning just about how food affects mind, body, and spirit. Um, how do we actually define health and healthy, um, healthy, healthy lifestyles and healthy food? How do we talk about um, what is um, healthy traditions? What are traditions, um, uh, food traditions that our families actually participate in? Um, how does food actually connect with um, us as individuals and our own histories, our own ancestry. Um, they'll also, again, be talking about um, or learning about um, financial literacy. So that is a main part of that as well. Our second um, internship is leading for justice. Um, so um, the students will be learning about food apartheid and also working in urban gardens. Through that time, we actually have um, a number of urban gardens throughout the city of Milwaukee that the teens work in, and they're um, growing food. And that food is um, donated to local food pantries. They will be mentoring middle school students, um, teaching them um, about growing, but also learning more about advocacy and what that means um, within the community, um, working with um, actual um, residents within the community and helping to um, advocate again for fresh food access. And then the last internship is um, leading through innovation. So students actually take um, their interest in um, advocacy is particularly within uh, fresh food access and create um, create products. And so they basically learn the process of um, developing a business model, um, learning how to pitch those products. And then we have an event where they actually are able to pitch those um, ideas to the community and get support as they continue to um, move forward in, in those um, endeavors. Um, students who basically complete all three of those internships will have the opportunity to participate in one of our six tracks of pre-apprenticeship. So we recently um, were certified pre-apprenticeship um, from DWD. And so there are six different tracks that students can choose from. That's um, greenhouse growing um, and uh, urban gardening, education, entrepreneurship, uh, food and beverage, as well as grounds and maintenance. And within that first year of pre-apprenticeship, it's basically all about skill building. So they're learning the core competencies within those areas. Um, and then um, basically they get a chance to come back for a second year of pre-apprenticeship. And in that year, we really want them to take everything that they've learned from that first year um, and take on a leadership project. So they'll either be partnering with Teens for Greens or be partnering with a community um, partner, an organization that partners with us. And based on their passions and based on the needs of that organization, um, collaborating to curate a leadership project for, for, the, um, for the year. 
in doing so, they also create a portfolio, which basically just um, talks about their process, what that project was about, what the outcomes were, what they learned through it. We can then take that portfolio and turn that into the Milwaukee Area Technical College, and they can earn credit for prior learning for completing that project. And then our fourth level is after they have completed the internship and two years of pre-apprenticeship, these students we feel have a, will have a just robust experience um, behind them um, and be able to then um, transition into employment in, in the area of their interest. And so we are working on developing a pool of employers, registered apprenticeships, as well as um, people folks who are willing to hire students who have that three years of, of hands-on experiential knowledge, leadership, um, and some accreditation behind them with the MATC, um, or higher education if they are interested in that. Um, I'm stumbling a bit because these are all like the technicalities of our program, but I think that anyone who works at Teamsville Greens will be able to tell you that this is the structure of our program, but our heart is really in helping young people grow and develop. Um, and so in the midst of um, all of the programming that we're developing, we have this huge vision. Um, I, you already shared um, our vision which is healthy and healed humans, um, basically facilitating change within their communities. And so at the heart of everything that we do is really um, human development. And so this model um, redesigned last year and proposed um, as something that we're working from um, because it, and it, any of you are familiar with Maslow's hierarchy of needs, this is basically the exact same thing but just re reimagined and redesigned um, because all of these um, needs on a human level are basically interconnected. And so in all the work that we do and how we develop our curriculum and how we build out our programming, we are really looking at how are we helping to meet all of these needs for our students, whether that's meeting them directly um, by within our organization, connecting them to resources that will help them and their families ensure that they have all these resources and really wanting them to grow and develop in their own sense of self, understanding and, and, and curating their own identity instead of having an outward identity where others are imposing um, who you are, or who, sh who you should be and what you should be going into. Um, we really want them to be able to leave our program understanding um, their own identity Def defining that identity for themselves um, and really having um, a lot of self-efficacy that whatever they decide to move into after Teams for Greens, that they have the power within them to do it. And so in the center of this is transcendence, which for us, we've defined as just understanding your, um, your connectedness to the whole. So understanding that as you live your life, as you make decisions, as you better yourself, that also affects everything around you, just as everything around you basically affects you as well. And so understanding that um, and really um, trying their best as they become, again, um, walk in more of who they are, that they'll do so with an acknowledgement of how they affect everything around them. And if we were to blow this model out, um, this is what we have established uh, called the Essential Economy Consortium with, again, that human development piece being at the center. So we're looking at what um, is possibly needed to have um, healthy and healed communities. And so uh, sovereignty and food systems, sovereignty and energy and water and infrastructure, which would include urban design, um, home ownership and construction, health systems, including mental and behavioral health, um, and also incorporating that indigenous and ancestral knowledge um, that we you know, all know has been kind of left out and was talked about in the keynote as well as well as personal development, which would include learning, um, job training, and basically anything that helps the person become um, more of, of who they are and be able to walk in their own power. And the idea is that we've been working with a number of different organizations within the city of Milwaukee, as well as um, cities like Madison and Chicago um, to really form um, collectives around each one of these areas. Um, of course, Teams Greens falls 
dead smack in the middle of that food systems piece. And what we've really been doing is working with different organizations saying, what are you helping to provide? What type of um, knowledge or skills or information are you providing to the community? And how can we all work together to make sure that a person that um, is interested in any area of the food system, whether that is soil, whether that is just learning how to grow, whether that is harvesting and distribution, whether that's in starting a community-led um, grocery store, how can we make sure that we have information that's available, um, that folks can get the information, get the knowledge um, that they need in order to be able to help create those sovereign systems within their communities. Um, and so again, we have been working over the last, I wanna say uh, almost two years now um, in these collectives and trying to convene and bring folks together so that they can begin to, um, in transparency and in humility um, and in empathy, um, create more robust programming through collaborative partnerships um, to provide um, opportunities for people to grow so that they can go back to their communities and help it to be healthy and healed and have um, sovereignty over these systems. So um, again, that keynote was very hard to follow up. <laughs> Um, but if you want to reach out and hear more about what we're doing, um, please feel free to do so. My email is there. We also have um, a link to our website. So if you want to learn more. Um, but yes, that is what um, we are currently working on with Teams for Greens. Thank you so much. Uh, you say that you're hard to follow, but there are a lot of people in the chat talking about how awesome the presentation was. Um, and your work just sounds really amazing. I really appreciate you sharing it with everybody. Um, I know that there are people looking for different ways to get involved and support everything you're doing. Um, so we'll make sure we'll include your email and website and everything and follow-up email. Um, but before we wrap up, I just wanted to see if there was anything else Dr. Wilson you would wanna share. Um, it could be in connection to the keynote. It could be just thoughts in general. Um, but yeah, if there's anything else that you're thinking of that you would like to share with the audience or ask you how of them, um, please feel free to do that. I guess the only thing that I think I, I would like to share is um, really hitting on that point um, that Ms. Penniman hit on as far as that reverence for indigenous and ancestral knowledge. Um, I've worked full time with Teens for Greens for three years. And um, prior to that, I worked under contract for three years. And honestly, um, my doctorate is in urban education. I've worked with nonprofits for um, a number of years. But um, I've never even been into growing, honestly. <laughs> Um, and so for the first two years with Teens for Greens, I didn't really try to grow anything at home or anything of that sort. I would be out in the gardens and learning alongside of the teens and working with them. But this year I decided to try to grow some things myself. Um, so tomatoes and peppers and some kales and lettuces. Um, and I, you know, got all of the supplies. We have, we're in an apartment, so I have a balcony and I go out and I'm just Googling everything and trying to make sure that I know when to water and all of those things. Um, and I'm a believer, so I hear this voice spiritually. It says, stop taking yourself so seriously. Just learn from this process. Um, and so I did. Um, and when I was trying to follow everything that was on Google and, um, you know, asking Claire from the greenhouse, like, what am I supposed to do with this? Um, for me personally, things just weren't working. Things weren't growing or they would start to grow and then it wouldn't. Um, and it wasn't until I said, let me just sit and kind of observe the plants. Let me observe what's going on um, and really just 
see, okay, this one looks a little bit droopy. Maybe this one needs water. This one looks okay. So maybe not so much this one. Starting to actually talk to the plants and let them know I was here and I'm rooting for their growth and I thank them for growing and all of these things. Um, then my little porch garden started to flourish, right? I would get up early in the morning and go sit on, on the balcony. And that would be my tending time every morning before everyone else got up. Um, and one morning, again, I hear this voice spiritually saying, this is a part of who you are. Of course, you know how to do this. This is a part of who you are. And so um, my great grandparents um, have land in Ripley, Tennessee. They were sharecroppers, um, Southern pastors, um, who also did a lot of community work. But then also my great grandfather was um, killed for trying to start a chapter of the NAACP in Ripley. So for me, that moment of being on the porch and being able to grow and hear, wait a minute, Sylvia, this is like in your bloodline, like this is a part of who you are, was very powerful. And it was a way for me to, I think, acknowledge um, that power and wisdom from my own ancestry. So when we're talking about teaching, particularly young people, who again, when you mention like urban agriculture or growing food, they're like, eh. Well, a lot of times it's like, I don't know about this whole farming thing, right? Because that's the first thing that comes to mind. I just feel like it is so important for us to connect, reconnect that knowledge like Ms. Penniman did in her presentation that we have this one narrative about slavery and why slaves were brought to this country. Um, but understanding that there was powerful knowledge and, and expertise that they had and they carried um, and that they were targeted because of that, um, I think is extremely important. And really that love of land and reconnecting with land as a part of who we are um, is extremely important as well. And it's very healing. And I can say this just from my own experience, even over this past year, um, the reverence, I think in honor, and I think even acknowledgement of those who have gone before me has just deepened so much just from me consciously putting my hands in the soil and realizing that this is a part of my DNA. And so when we, again, um, introduce growing and food and, you know, advocacy around sovereignty and all of those things, I think it's so important um, that we do acknowledge and share um, the history that was shared with, with us today, um, as well as getting folks of color, um, indigenous folks in our communities to share with our young people and to rekindle that understanding and knowledge of um, how it's so deeply connected to all of us. So um, I guess that's my, that's overwhelmingly, I think what I took from that presentation. And so I figure I just share. That was incredibly powerful. And I, yeah, really appreciate your thoughts and everything. Um, yeah, really appreciate you and all the work that you're doing. I don't think I have any better way to possibly end this. So um, yeah, just wanted to say thank you again so much to you, Dr. Wilson, to all of you who are in the audience for being here today. Um, yeah, there's been so many thank yous and, and upvotes and everything in the chat um, for you. So yeah, just appreciate all of you. Thank you so much for being here tonight. Um, we will share out any and all links that 
um, you might be interested in and ways you can get involved. Um, support Teens Grow Greens, Dr. Wilson's work, um, support Soul Fire Farm and everything like that. So um, we'll be in touch soon. Hopefully talk to you all soon. And thank you again so much for coming. Have a good night, everybody.